Welcome to the Holiday Monologue. You're probably going, what? What are we doing with the Holiday Monologue? What are you talking about? Well, the U.S. is 4th of July holiday, and I thought I would do a special video just for that. We may also do a Monday Monologue. Just have to see how my timing goes. I'm going to really try to ramp up the content on the channel for the next month or so. So this is going to be like the month of stereo content. And I just did a review on this little guy, which we'll talk about just for a moment in this video. But I did want to say I'm excited that I finally almost fulfilled all the orders that I've taken at the first of the year. I've got two more photo stages up here, which I hope I'm going to finish for the weekend and have them shipped out on Monday. So I'll be all caught up. That means we can get started back on some projects and possibly some new builds. As I've said before, I think what I'm going to be doing more on my business side is instead of taking orders for products, I'm just going to build stuff and put it up for sale. Maybe even put up a for sale page on my website instead of this kind of weird thing of trying to custom build stuff for people that just honestly didn't work out. I had four Phono preamps special ordered and two of those people ghosted me and there was one other person that put a deposit that changed their mind and wanted their deposit back and i just i i, I didn't have the non-refundable deposit language and anything so i'm just giving his money back got two customers that do want them so i'm going to finish theirs up and then hey you guys that didn't buy it you lost out on some of the best sounding photo stages i've ever heard and my customers agree so your loss somebody else's game. So I do have about seven more of these that I'm going to be building and putting up for sale later this year. So wait for that. Anyway, budget audio. And I'm not going to say cheap audio. I know this joke's getting old, but there's already a cheap audio, man. So we're not doing cheap audio. We're doing reasonably priced audio. And for you guys that are just starting out and you need something to get started with get one of these little aima a70s don't get the little cheap this little guy don't don't i mean these are okay i know they got great reviews but trust me get one of these it's only a hundred dollars more it's a much better piece it's got xlr inputs it's got room to grow in it and then get a couple of sparkos op amps open the thing up you will need a little soldering or mechanical foots in with these speaker jacks that are unnecessarily difficult to deal with because the wires are too short if they add a little wire on it it would make it much easier you hope you're listening to Yima but anyway get one of these put some of those Sparkos op amps in it don't don't even listen to it out of the box and you'll have a nice little amp as a starter which will destroy any of those cheap china tube amps that people have sent me like that little noob sound 6p1 or the you know those old chin and the old you know there's all that junk that's under 500 bucks the rice song a12 unmodified this sounds way better and all you got to do is pop a couple of op amps in it and it's good to go so if you're just starting out or you're looking to be on a limited budget this is a great choice along with this little dragonfly red DAC they're nicer DACs I like my E70 topping which is another really nice DAC and that blue sound note X I got is okay but I actually find that I'm using my E70 more than I am my streamer just because it's easier to deal with I can just USB plug it in a tablet or my phone and use the native apps. I'm not using their streamier thing. It's just, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, that's a subject for another day. And I don't do that much streaming anyway. So, yeah, we're going to get back doing some fun stuff here. Got the Musical Paradise. Got Transformers for it. Blah, blah, blah. Been all over that before. But I guess one of the things that I was going to talk about today, something somebody made a comment in an earlier video that really stuck a chord with me when they were talking about certain types of audio gear is that they were saying 
yeah, that just sucks the life out of the music. And I don't know how to describe that. What is the life of the music? I don't know what it is, but I know it when I hear it. You might call it an X factor. You might call it a enjoyment factor. It sounds special. I don't, I don't know how exactly to describe it, but I know it when I hear it. Like, when I heard this thing out of the box, it was like, yeah, it sounds good. But I just can't put my finger on it. It just doesn't have it. And after I put the op amps in it, it's like, now it's got it. And I've talked about this before. It's true with vinyl. It's true with some streaming stuff. That how it's a mastered, mixed, encoded, whatever, can either have life to it or not. And I know some people are really anal about this silent background and it's so dark I feel like I'm in outer space kind of a thing you know and I'm not one of those people maybe when I was younger I kind of appreciated that it was one of the reasons that I made the jump from vinyl to CDs back in the 80s when I did was that especially the vinyl I had was really noisy I didn't take care of my vinyl so, you know, we'd have keg parties and stuff, and the vinyl just did not get taken care of. And so it would end up getting all scratched up and stuff. And, you know, to me, it was like, well, with CDs, we can have a keg party, and people can be all drunk and mishandling the stuff, and the scratches don't matter, or not like they do on vinyl. So, you know, I thought, oh, this is great. But now that I've gotten older, the stuff like the background noise just doesn't, bother me as much and I tell this to people when they're interested in one of my phono stages if you're looking for something that you can turn the amplifier you know three times the volumes you ever listen to it and then go and put your ear next to the speaker and you don't want to hear anything don't buy a tube preamp especially one of mine because it will not pass that test and this is a great example Jethro Tull Aqualong this is some great music that I listened to a lot when I was growing up. And I was trying to find a good copy or a good sounding copy of this album. And I went through a couple of vintage types and just wasn't super impressed. They sounded kind of muddy and just didn't have, you know, the bass seemed really thin. And so then I bought the Steve Wilson remix that has like the super clean it's 180 grams of vinyl and yeah it's supposed to be the bomb well the first copy I got while it was super clean with no surface noise the outer edge had this little double whoop kind of warpage in it and you could actually hear the needle going raw, 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 every time it would go over it. And so I sent it back and the place I got it from was like, you know, we have to like verify that the album is defective. And then once it is, we'll send you one back. And then they did. So they verified it. They sent me another copy. Well, this one on the intro to Locomotive Breath, there was a little defect in the vinyl that every time, every rotation, it would do a cl like click, 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 and it was pretty loud. And it was, you know, if it had been during a loud passage of the song, I would have overlooked it. But it was in a silent to building kind of part of the beginning of that song, and it just it brought you out of the audio virtual reality hearing that click, and so. I'd hate to say it, this one's defective too. And I was fine with them sending me another copy, and I guess they got tired of me and just sent me a refund, which wasn't really what I was looking for. But anyway, that copy or that Steve Wilson remix, while it was good and the noise floor was really low, it the bass seemed a little thick or a little heavy from what I remember. 
If you watch South Park, they did that episode on member berries where people are like, I remember that. And, and there's something about a certain sound that brings back memories. And so I think that's maybe part of what I was looking for. Anyway, I found what I was looking for. Let me get this look out of the way so I can pull this album out. And you can see the jacket on this is already kind of ripped, which I don't care about. Anyway, this is the original pressing, I was told, the brown label on Reprise Records, and it sounds fantastic. Now, has it got surface noise? Yeah. Does it bother me? No, it doesn't. I hear it when I first drop the needle, but once the music's playing, or once even the record starts, it's almost like my brain just filters out that noise and I don't hear it. Does that make sense? I mean, I I know some people, they can't do that. And maybe that's why there's digital and why there's different components and different things is each of us has a different way that we hear music and process what we're hearing. But for me, it's almost like my brain does noise canceling if there's a steady sound whether it's a low hum or whether it's the surface noise on an LP and it's why that rhythmic clicking or that warpage that was like was bothersome is because it's not a steady noise and my brain can't filter that out now, I don't know if everybody's like that. Leave in the comments below if you feel like that that's kind of the way you are or if you're the opposite way and that you can't stand there being any kind of noise in your system. I know I sold that little Pass ACA clone to one guy and he instantly returned it and said, yeah, if I put my ear up to the speaker, I hear some hum. And it's, I'm sure the power supply isn't quiet enough and I won't, you know, I'm, I'm not... And I was like, fine, you know, if that bothers you. So the next guy, and he loved it. And he didn't even mention that. So I know there's different tolerance for that kind of stuff. So anyway, just going to kind of touch on that little weird thing that I've noticed about stereo, listening to music, audio. It's this whole idea that you're, just like your vision does, like automatic white balance. I feel like my brain can do automatic noise canceling and I think that's probably what's going on with my tinnitus too where if I don't think about it like I just thought about it and now I hear it if I don't think about it I don't hear it because my brain's filtering it out even though it's probably my brain creating it so yeah our minds are crazy anyway so let's look at some other music um this is something that I highly recommend. It's on Rhino High Fidelity by Warner Brothers, Miles Davis. And here's the inside. Tutu, or that's how you pronounce it. I don't know what you pronounce it, but that's it right there. This is freaking awesome. I just, it's not what I expected from a jazz record. And it's got kind of a... 80s vibe to it and I'm not even sure when this was recorded let's see if it says in here when this was recorded it probably says somewhere let me get my little magnifier here I use an old camera lens as a magnifier there we go 1986 no wonder it's got an 80s vibe um yeah it's really got a fun sound and so if you haven't heard this get it i believe kevin gray mastered this let's see if it says on here who originally mastered by doug Sachs at mastering labs uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. yeah i'm not sure it doesn't have his name on here but i'm pretty sure that kevin gray had something to do with this recent remastering and even if he didn't it sounds glorious and yeah 
available at Rhino High Fidelity. I think that's the only place you can get it. I bought it directly from them because I wanted them to get all the profits. That's just kind of how I am. And again, if you don't have this, highly recommend you picking up a copy of this. And then the next one is very obscure. This is, and I'm going to butcher this name. Now you have to remember when I pronounce stuff wrong, I'm from the South and we call Ponce de Leon, Ponce de Leon. So yeah, maybe that explains to y'all why my pronunciation is so crazy. Yutaka Yokakura, Love Light is the name of the album. And it was on Alpha Records, made in Japan. This is what the first pressing looks like. Now I've heard the later pressings and they sound good too. This one seems to be a little, a little more air, a little more clean, a little more fresh. Hard to you know explain. I'm just finding sometimes that the first pressings of all this stuff ends up being the best one. So anyway, probably could stream this. If you haven't heard this, this is really fun, cool music and highly recommend listening to this just for something very different. It doesn't sound real Japanese, but it's definitely got some Asian influence and it's just more fun music that I've stumbled across. I was over at a friend of mine's house and they had a copy of this, a later pressing, and we listened to it for a little bit. It was like, I took a picture on my phone and then like a year later I was going through my phone pictures and I was like, oh yeah, I need to find a copy of that album. And then I did, did my usual Google search, like album name, best pressing, and like the Steve Hoffman forum is the one that shows up the most, but sometimes in other forums it does. I try to do a little bit of research. People are saying if you can find a first pressing that they really do sound better, but they're really rare. And it was the only one on eBay that was the first pressing, and I'm not sure if the guy knew what he had or not. It, was, it wasn't cheap. It was about 45 bucks for one that's, to me, in mint condition. And I'll pay for that for a really clean, nice-sounding vinyl any day of the week. So anyway, I think that's going to wrap up this holiday monologue. And I'm not sure I'll ever do another one of these, but I know a lot of people have a long weekend, so I thought I'd just throw that out there for some fun content. If you're enjoying my channel, please sub. We're over 14K subs now. I super appreciate that. Thanks to all you Patreon supporters. That helps keep the channel going. Helps me be able to afford doing all these projects and stuff. Thanks to all you folks that have purchased gear from me. I do have gear for sale now and then, so, you know, stay tuned for that. Thanks for you folks that make donations to the channel. If you found something, you know, really helpful to you building your audio system or repairing some gear or something like that, and feel like it was a worthwhile thing. I appreciate the cash donations at my website, which it still stuns me that people do that. And I super appreciate that. And we'll see you soon for what will be the Monday Monologue.